few years, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's a long time now. <laughs> yes, that's right. Well, I better get on with it. How, how long have I got? Um, everyone's good for nine thirty, are they? Stop. Or... Uh. <laughs> 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 well, uh, as you're a pan panelist, you'll see the number of um, attendees on your on your panel there. So you'll you'll know how long to go when it all, the number starts where, disappearing. <laughs> where do I see that? I can't see that. Can't you? In the panel, you should have attendees. Halfway down. Oh yes, 122 out of 1,001. Yes. Right. <laughs> So, so I don't know. do gigs for less than a thousand, no. <laughs> mm. Anyway, thank you very much, Sue, and good evening to everyone. Thank you for having me tonight, and thank you to David for the build-up he gave me on Monday. I hope I can come close to meeting the expectations that he has set. <laughs> he said I was passionate. It's true, I have become passionate about EVs over the last several years. I had my son to, to thank for this, who you may quite legitimately fit think would be in his 40s having an old dad like me, but he's still in his 20s. Um, I think it was around 2013, 14 that he gave me a birthday present of a book, an autobiography of a famous entrepreneur who had made a fair bit of money, which he subsequently invested in, among other things, an electric vehicle company. I'm sure you can't guess who that is. I subsequently booked a test drive in a vehicle produced by this company and was so blown away by the car that it made me want one desperately, which I've never had, had that before. I've never bothered about cars particularly, but this one just seemed, you just wanted it. It was so techno technologically superior to anything else I'd driven. And it was so fast, the acceleration was incredible. Um, I think I even tried to get people in the Oxford group to um, share a car with me, but, um, they all said no. <laughs> but anyway, so let's get to it. Um, disclaimer, anything that I say is my own opinion and definitely should not be taken as investment advice through your own research. And the closure I do own and drive an EV. And um, this is the sort of content I put together. EVs, are they new technology? Why EVs? Why we should have them or, or not have them? Will EVs succeed in replacing polluting vehicles? to vest in the EVs, there's a, a user group, um, uh, a watch list that we can look at for a bit. And who will win, the legacy manufacturers or the newcomers? And who has the best chance of being the long-term winner? Well, I'll try and get through this as quickly as possible, because um, I know you probably want to have something to eat. So EVs, are they new? Well, not really. This is the, um, the Porsche. Porsche P1. It was built in 1898. It's strange. I, I read a book when I was a teenager about uh, Ferdinand Porsche, and he mentioned in this book electric cars. And I would have been a teenager in the late 50s and 60s. Um, and one thing that, that really stuck in my mind was that um, every wheel had its own hub motor, which I thought was a brilliant idea, getting the power directly to the wheels. But anyway, that's a long time ago. So what's happened since then? In 1996 in America, GM uh, brought out the EV1. Um, that was not a great success. I think it was a success for the people who leased it. These cars were only leased. They wouldn't let you buy one. And um, what happened was after a few years, when the lease is uh, finished, GM recalled them all and destroyed them, um, allegedly because they were not profitable enough. They would rather sell their ice machines. I hope you all know what ice means, internal combustion engine vehicles. And um, they weren't going to make, so in a way, perhaps they thought they're going to disrupt their own business uh, from their away from their profitable uh, ice machines and it wouldn't do them any good. Anyway, so the next thing that happened in 2008 was that Tesla introduced the Roadster. Based on a Lotus Elise, these cars were designed to show the attractiveness of an electric vehicle through its range and speed. So, um, by the way, um, Sue, are we going? Do you want me to distribute my slides? 
Um, if you're okay with that, I'm sure we will have requests for them. I love, I just one love that, <laughs> that, that Porsche. It's just wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but um, the reason I ask is because I've actually included lots of links. You can put links into presentations. So if you want further information, I've put in embedded links in these things so you can find out more information. You can see if I if I click on one, it will open a, a web page. Um, so just just in case anyone wants it, uh, that's the way to get hold of information. When you're you've got to be in presentation mode for that. So why do we need EVs? Well, first of all, is government-led action. Uh, many countries, including the UK, have decreed that only non-polluting vehicles can be sold after a period of time. In the UK, it's 2030, I believe. For others, maybe 2035 or 2040. And what? Why is it we we want to get rid of them? Well, I suppose it's obvious, really, isn't it? That the air pollution is killing us. I mean, there was a terrible case in South London of a young lady who lived um, near the South Circuit Road. And she was only nine years old when she died in 2013. But recently, there's been an inquest that um, found that air pollution had made a material contribution to her death. And that, that uh, inquest was dated, as far as I know, on the 21st of April, 21. And of course, it's killing the planet. Um, so, are there alternatives to EVs? Well, a lot of people talk about fuel cells. I, what, what, everything I've read doesn't seem to think that they're the solution. Maybe the solution for um, transportation companies with a large fleet of heavy goods vehicles or bus companies that have refueling depots, it may be suited to that. But I mean, at the moment, we don't have any meaningful distribution points for those. And no petrol stations, I don't think of converted to hydrogen and um, there aren't many cars anyway and the, and the fuel is about the same price price you pay for petrol anyway so it doesn't it's not really economic in that basis um, and I've actually put some you know if there are some people who are really keen on uh, fuel cells I've actually included a couple of well a document here and um, uh, a Robert Llewellyn uh, fully charged live presentation where he introduces a German guy called Agnes White, who's dead against the um, against those things. Well, oh, by the way, at the bottom of these slides, I've I've have included on some of them uh, electric vehicles debunking the myths because so many people um, have some views about electric vehicles that you know the batteries don't last any time and um, you know they're all terrible ranges and well there's lots of different things they they pollute the air more because of the way they're made building them and um and the batteries and you can't dispose of the batteries which of course you can so that um i've got a link here to an article that will explain all those myths and how to debunk them when when you're trying to convince your friends that they should have an ev then refer to that um the future of EVs appears to be very bright, and there are a multitude of contenders like legacy vehicle manufacturers such as Ford, GM, VW, and Toyota, plus a plethora of newcomers like Neo, the Auto, Xpeng, Workhorse, Lordstown Motors, and BYD, to name but a few. One camp company to me stands out head and shoulders above the rest, but more of that later. Um, so um, I just came across just the other day an article about um, from the BBC. Um, again, I've got a link here to it. And one of the things I took from it was this S curve, you know, the um, exponential growth thing, you know, the S curve. It, um, and to me, it looks like we're still in quite an early stage. I think about there. And I'm basing that purely on the fact that the um, the Tesla Roadster came out in uh, 2008, which is 13 years ago. So I, I think that's um, that's where it's going to go. So it's only going to get uh, bigger and better. And let's see. <clears throat> so I'm moving on. You may want to know where you can find investable EV stocks in Vectorvest. Well, you may know this already in the overview section of watch lists. Um, 
there is electric vehicle companies. And it's not just electric vehicle, as it says on here, included are also companies that um, supply technology and uh, mining companies like Albemarle. So <clears throat> that's where you can find some. Um, 14 of the ones in that list of 45 companies are in fact EV manufacturers, as opposed to legacy manufacturers. And um, I'll just run through them quickly. Obviously Tesla is the top. Um, Tesla's quite, um, got quite good RV and uh, RS here. R RT's gone down lately, but anyway, Magna is a Canadian company, but I'd be a, they're kind of a, an OEM and they build cars for other people. And I have a, I'm sure I've read that Magna have built the uh, Jaguar I-Pace in Switzerland for Jaguar. So if you buy a Jaguar, it's not made over here, I'm afraid. Jaguar I-Pace, that is. And anyway, the next few of well, Li Auto, and Xpeng and Neo are doing quite well. And they're all based in China. Workhorse is an American company who supply vans and they were hoping to get a big chunk of the US postal um, bid that to happen recently but something went wrong and I think they're trying again. Geely is another Chinese company who I believe own Volvo and MG. MG of course based in Oxford when they were first uh, built or Abingdon to be precise. Um, and they, they've got a couple of good MGs actually at, at a reasonable price and uh, pretty good as far as I, what I've seen about them. Fisker is an American company. Nikola, don't go near Nikola. It's, um, this is the, the company that um, produced the truck and made a promotional video about it. They towed it to the top of the hill because it had nothing inside it. Presumably it had brakes. And they pushed it down the hill and then filmed this promotional video uh, of this truck rolling down the hill getting up to 50 miles an hour. So um, the, the MD of that, or the CEO has left that company now. Candy is a Chinese company. I think they make small EVs. They look very safe to me. Electromechanica, with the name Solo, are, I think, a Canadian company. Might make three wheels up, three wheelers. Archimoto is an American company, and their code is FUV, which stands for Fun Utility Vehicles. And they make three three-wheeler electrical vehicles, which are very fun. And they got this thing called the Deliverator, which will um, provide like uh, last mile deliveries. And then Lordstown, I think they've just gone bust. They've run out of money. They, they were acting fraudulently. They said they had all these pre-orders and in the end they turned out to be uh, not very real at all. And Canoe, I think is a Canadian. I don't, Canadian company, I don't know too much about them. So here we go next. So within the 45 companies, sorry, I'll just get rid of my little thing on the top right. Um, the 45 companies in the Vector Vest EV list, some of them are legacy manufacturers. And I thought I'd just see how they've done this year. So I've done a a quick, well, I've uh, done a quick test, and um, they've all done pretty well, except for poor old Nissan. Um, I've had it on VW as well, who've done very well. They they copied um, Tesla a, a month or so ago with having a battery day, which um, seemed to perk up their stock no end. Um, it's hard to forget that uh, people like VW, Daimler, and BMW were all behind the, the diesel gate. Well, especially VW, but uh, can we forgive them now and buy their EVs? I don't know. Anyway, at the end, at the bottom of every watch list on VectorVest, there is the watch list average. And if you right click on it, you get this little pop up here. I'm not sure what autofit all comms means, but you can view a watch list graph. graph. And uh, I, I did one the other day, for, as of last Friday. And um, you can see there was a great run up until I think that's the 16th of Feb for that high. And since then, they've been range bound between these two um, support and resistance levels around 
or just below 60 and uh, nearly 70 on that line. So I haven't looked the last few days, but I know a lot of the stocks were increasing. Um, now, I, I've, I squeezed in the next slide. has got nothing to do with VectorVest. It's just something that um, I thought might appeal to, to some of our members who um, are into cryptocurrencies. So I just picked this up the other day. I uh, just noticed it's a stock for us new EV out, but it's got a unique selling proposition in that it's the first EV that can mine cryptocurrencies while it's parked. So I don't know if, I, if anyone's interested in that, Stephen perhaps, Stephen who um, did a fantastic presentation for us at our last uh, user group meeting. Anyway, I just thought I'd pop that in. Um, to stimulate you and just think, see if anyone's interested in cryptocurrencies. Anyway, the, looking at the legacy manufacturers, the old ICE vehicle manufacturers and the newcomers, the NEOs and Lee Autos and Teslas of this world, what are their challenges? Um, I think the main challenge for the legacy Companies is actually making profits from EVs that um, that you, as against ICE vehicles. The um, keeping dealers happy with supplying less profitable EVs, I think, certainly in this country, if you go and ask, ask show interest in an EV, the dealer will probably point you towards a, an ICE car because um, they make more margin on them. EVs at the moment are more expensive. That's probably going to change soon uh, than ICE vehicles. But um, so there's not so much margin on them. Then they push people to buy an ICE vehicle instead of an EV. And um, the other thing that doesn't the dealers won't like is that um, they don't require much ma maintenance. I mean, my my brake pads will probably last forever because I always use the regenerative braking feature of the car. So, you know, if you lift your foot off the accelerator, the car slows down, which I find a great way to drive. Um, the other problem that everyone's got really is building a, um, well, competing with those that sell online only, which is becoming, um, well, I think Tesla started that, but other people are doing it. A few people are doing it now. I think Daimler started during the pandemic. But building a massive battery supply is an issue, I think, for um, everybody whether it's by yourself or through suppliers, um, I think there's going to become great shortages in lithium and nickel. So maybe that's um, a, just as good a way to invest as in these cars. Who knows? And some people say that legacy car makers will not survive, at least not in their current form. Just recently, um, Fiat Chrysler merged with Peugeot Group, I think, and um, they've got 16 brands in this now. So they're having to change or merge to meet these new challenges. What about the newcomers? Well, they've got to establish themselves first, which may take a while. Um, raising capital, although Neo seems to be pretty good at that. Building a mass, again, building a massive battery supply. This is uh, an issue, I think, for every company. So what's next on my, and making profits, of course. Just where I put that in there, as a Chinese saying goes, there are interesting times ahead for all the EV players. Now we move on to, um, who do you think? The, the company that I think are gonna make it but well, they have made it already and carry on leading the pack is Tesla. One of the things I like about Tesla is their, um, their vision. Their vision is to create the most compelling car company of the 21st century by driving the world's transition to electric vehicles while its mission is to accelerate the advent of sustainable transport by bringing compelling mass market electric cars to market as soon as possible. There you are. I didn't want you to read it while I was saying it, so uh, there it is. Uh, 
it, but uh, Tesla is an incredible company. Oh, my computer's just gone a bit funny. Um, that's better. Basically, it's sort of a paradigm shift in automobile manufacturing and renewable energy products. It's a great innovator and will actually continue to see improved models without waiting for a new model year. This is something unique, I think, to Tesla. Um, there's a great guy called Sandy Munro, who's an automobile uh, consultant in the States who tears down cars and um, provides sales reports. He tore down the Model 3 in the early days and came up with, um, although he liked some of it, he was highly critical and um, sent a list of improvements with Tesla, which, in fact, they've acted on. But anyway, one of the things that Tesla do is if they find something isn't can be improved or save money, they would do it right away. They won't say, oh, we'll save that for, you know, the next model year. So they are working on a sort of continuously improvement basis. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, over the next few slides, go through a list of some of the compelling reasons to own Tesla stock or, in fact, the Tesla car. The list is not exhaustive, and I've probably missed out many things. But for example, the fact that Tesla don't advertise at all because they generate enormous word of mouth demand that they're currently satisfied with their existing production facilities, which actually saves them billions of pounds a year, which instead of being spent on advertising is used to build factories and things. Um, and one of the reasons that some of these um, companies like CNBC don't seem to like Tesla is that they probably they don't spend any money with them. I don't know, but uh, you get very biased views on some some people anti Tesla. I haven't mentioned either in my list that um, they're currently building two gigafactories, one near Berlin and one and the other one in Austin. Or or that even they expect this year to um, increase their production from five hundred thousand in twenty twenty by fifty percent to seven hundred and fifty thousand in 2021 maybe even more the other thing i haven't mentioned i don't know i'm not saying i haven't mentioned these things i mentioned them now aren't i anyway the other thing i've mentioned is that tesla have over a a, a, a million orders for the cyber truck the futuristic uh, pickup truck which funny enough after the um ford f-150 lightning electrical pickup truck was launched the 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 pre-orders for the Cybertruck also went up. Anyway, let's get to the 12 reasons I have listed. So, a compelling reason to me about um, Tesla for owning the car is they've got their own supercharger network. Um, if you have a Tesla and, a, and, a, and you're on a long journey, you have no worries. They have industry leading ranges of cars anyway, but they also have a, a, a supercharger network. And I'll show you a map in a minute. Um, basically, you tell your car where you're going and it will plan your route and appropriate charging stops. When you arrive, you just plug in and relax. No fumbling with multiple subscription cards as you would with, for example, the currently disjointed charging infrastructure that we have in, in the UK. Hopefully that UK infrastructure will change. There is a great company called GridServe who have built a charging station in Basildon in Essex, which is actually brilliant because it's loads of chargers. Um, and I think, you know, it's gonna, if, if, it, if they get more of those around, then that's gonna be brilliant for the whole business. But with Tesla, when you go to a charge station, you just plug in, don't have to do anything, your account will automatically be built. So I said I mentioned, I'll show you a map. So this is all the, in our neck of the woods, all the UK and Ireland superchargers. And you can see the, the massive amount that they have in Europe as well. <clears throat> so I think, I think that is a bit of a moat for them really. Um, as an investor or as a, a car buyer, that means that you, you, you can go anywhere and not worry. Basically I've, with my electric vehicle, if I go somewhere, I do have to worry a bit about where I'm going to get it charged. There are things like ZapMap that help, but you know, it is a bit of a problem at the moment. Hopefully it will get a lot better. The other thing is, of course, that a lot of hotels have Tesla destination charges 
that can charge your vehicle at a leisurely pace overnight. So they're not the super, super fast chargers, which Tesla have at motorway stops and things, but they will charge you overnight. Um, another thing that they do, which I think is, is fantastic, they, they have over the air updates. And sometimes these bring new facilities to you. Um, they call them Easter eggs. I think once the, um, they increase the range of some cars by about five miles by tinkering with the software. And this, you can do all this at home. I mean, my car needed a software update. I had to drive 25 miles, waste half a day, leaving it with a dealer to sort out. But the, I think one or two people are copying this now. Maybe Volkswagen has tried, but I think initially they failed. They'll probably get it right in a while. But um, anyway, what's the next, the next thing? Batteries. Well, Tesla have always been um, working hard on batteries. They have um, a few people in the company and outside, and they've just released, or last year, they announced on their battery day, the new 4680. And 4680 purely means that it's um, 46 millimeters across and 80 millimeters long or high. But they're also working with quite a few partners. I think I've missed out a couple here, but there's a, a Chinese one called um, CATL. Panasonic, of course, they've been working with for several years. LG Chem from Korea. And they are letting these companies, although they're going to be, build their own 4680s, the demand is so high that they're going, going to put it out to these companies as well. And this, this battery is cheaper, longer lasting, longer range. And even they're going to make it form part of the vehicle structure, which uh, is absolutely brilliant. And if, if you get the slides, you can click here and get some more information about that as well. Let's move on. Of course, Tesla are not just a, uh, an EV company, which I suppose I shouldn't mention this part as it's not about EVs, but they do have their energy side as well. And I don't know if you've heard about this, but um, they were... In South Australia, they're having lots of problems with blackouts. And Tesla came up with a solution featuring their mega packs of batteries. And <clears throat> in fact, they were so confident they could do it. They said, if we hadn't installed it in 100 days, you can have it for nothing. But they installed it, and it's been going on strength to strength. They're saving millions of dollars. The, the, the electricity supply in South Australia is very reliable now, never breaks down because these batteries can take over in milliseconds if there's a blackout on the grid. So again, you can pick, click the picture for more details when you, if you have the slides, if you want the slides. Another interesting feature that I, I think is pretty good um, is that they have a sentry mode. If you leave your car in a in a car park and unattended. Because Tesla have all these autopilot features and they have certain cameras built into the, into the car, you put it in sentry mode, I think it's probably done automatically, and it will keep an, a watchful eye on things. And if it senses any close movement, I think it flashes the lights at people and the cameras start to record. Um, there's several pictures of the on the internet or on YouTube of people keying a car or like smashing a call to light window as shown in this one. And because of the cameras are on the side, on the front, on the back, everywhere, they can get the good view of the people. And some people have been featured, you know, an, an unlikely star of a YouTube video, and they've seen it after keying the Tesla, and they've actually gone straight to the police and confessed because, you know, they were clearly visible. Anyway, I think it's a great feature. I think it makes it more attractive to buy. One probably one of the greatest features of the cars is that they have the safe, the safest car on the road. Um, this is done by the NHTSA, National Highway Transport Administration in America, NHTSA, I think they call it. And the, all these uh, are the Tesla models here. And then they get worse. But this is this is the lowest overall probability of an injury in a crash. In a crash. But there's another interesting story about um, two Teslas in 
in this country, in Dorset, last year, you may have read about this on the news, but um, it, it was one tree, two Teslas, the same road coming from opposite directions and both the same car. I mean, what a coincidence. Um, and both families were saved because of automatic braking. Again, if you click on here, it will take you to the RAC website and the, and the full story. Right. Robo taxis. Wow. What can I say? This could be the biggest stock multiplier um, at all. I mean, other companies, the, the big key differential for, for Tesla is that while well, you've got other companies like Waymo, who are training vehicles to operate in limited situations, in limited areas, uh, Tesla, because of its autopilot and full self-driving packages, has all the data relayed back to their to them, and they they collect it and analyze it and with their AI and because of that, they are progressing faster, I believe, than anyone else. And if we ever, I mean, most people have a car and it's it's 95% of the time it's stuck in the drive or on the road doing nothing. Um, you don't need a car really, but we all like to have one, don't we? But um, if, if it was a taxi service, it was very cheap, then, you know, this could be a huge thing. When it will come, when the regulations allow it, who knows? It could be three years, five years, 10 years. It might take a long time. It might be quicker than you think. Um, this is a video here. If you click on this, it takes a video and um, they think that they're coming soon. Right. <clears throat> Should I check to see how many people are watching now? <laughs> um three no. <laughs> <laughs> not at well, all the there's, one or two, there's one or two disappeared but um i've just discovered <laughs> where all the chat is it's in it's marked questions rather than chat and i'm just trying to whiz through it while i'm listening to you okay oh, people are taking into oh good 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 <laughs> well this next bit i'm going to show a little video here um one of the things that well, when the Tesla car was um, analysed by Sandy Munro, it's worth watching Sandy Munro. He's an expert on auto automobiles, and he's been around for donkey's years. He um, he said that the back end of the car was it was too involved. It had seventy parts and um, loads of stop uh, uh, spot welds, and it it was um, you know just a mess in his view. And uh, I think Tesla took heart and they found this company that makes giga presses. I can't remember the name of them now. And um, they, they actually um, make these huge stamping or casting machines. And you, you'll see coming out of them in a moment, the, um, oh dear, it's a bit, um, you watch this come out of the casting machine. There's probably a rear end of a vehicle. In fact, I can't really tell which end of it is, but because uh, they, they use them for front and back end. Sorry about the video, it's a bit stilted. Yeah, only, it's only 44 seconds, so it'll be finished soon. There you go. Just as an aside, of course, um, get rid of that. Um, yeah, they, they, um, <clears throat> Tesla have a, have a metallurgist uh, working for them. And I think they get expertise from SpaceX as well, who make all the rockets. And when they built the Cybertruck, they actually made their own uh, stainless steel alloy. Just a little aside. I mean, they got very clever people working there, but we'll come on to that in a moment. Um, their first production car, sedan, as they would say over there in America, or saloon, was the Model S, and it was voted car of the decade. I think I've seen it called the car of the century, 
And of course, I'm expecting you, everybody knows about the new version that's just come out and was really, or they had a delivery event last week for it, a week ago. Was it last Wednesday or Thursday? Anyway, they, um, this car was so innovative that um, everyone thought it was years ahead of its time, and it still is. Now they've updated it to the Plaid, which is um, super fast, 0 to 60 in under two seconds. And I understand that Jay Leno has just done a, a, a quarter mile um, in record time as well. That's in the last few days. So what else do they do? Of course, they got their, as I said before, they got their energy side and they manufacture solar panels along with um, solar roof tiles. So these, these tiles on the roof are all capable of um, generating electricity from solar. So it's so much better looking than solar panels on the roof, but they're, quite, they're pretty expensive. But I just thought I'd mention it. I don't think I've got a link on this one. Anyway, number 11. This is a cool feature, <laughs> cool feature, because it works with the um, HVAC system, heating, ventilating, and air conditioning. Uh, well, it replaces it, basically. They, they've put in a, a heat pump, and <clears throat> so basically it makes it more efficient, so you've got more power left for your driving than for air conditioning or for heating in the winter, because everyone who's, who's got a EV knows that in the summer, when you've got the air con on, you lose a bit of range. And in the winter, when the battery's cold and everything, you um, also lose some range. But this will transfer heat. You need someone who knows, understands heat pumps better than me. But anyway, if you click on this link, if you get the slides, and it will take you to, to, um, uh, <coughs> to a website. So it was a brilliant idea. They also have this thing called an octo valve. I guess it's got eight um, inlets which is used in conjunction with this. You'll find out all about it if you click on that link. And now, the last one of my 12 reasons for buying a Tesla car or investing in the company is that um, they, um, <clears throat> they are the company that young engineers, graduate engineers, most want to work for. In fact, number one is Tesla. And of course, SpaceX is two, which is the... Uh, the next, um, the other company, one of the other companies that Musk is involved with. But um, this is an absolute um, massive advantage. According to my script, it says that can't be overstated. In a fast tech world of innovation, it's the most important way for companies to stay competitive. The best way to achieve a high pace of innovation is through establishing a culture that nurtures it within the organization and attracts top engineering talent. So there you go. Again, you can click on the link and um, get more information. Um, just today, uh, on, I heard it on the BBC, or I got um, a notification on my phone. Um, it, I think this just shows how important clim climate control and climate change is, really, because what it's saying here is we're going to be faced with um, lots of um, storms and uh, heat waves over the next few years, floods. I mean, it's going to be awful. So we really need to get a grip with this. And um, the part for, well, Boris has got uh, an event, hasn't he? Is it in Glasgow, the Climate uh, Summit, I believe? Anyway, I just thought I'd stick this in because you'd probably be interested in to have a look at the article again, click on it, and it will come up. Now, let me conclude. I've held Tesla shares for seven years now, and it's been a hairy ride. From 2014 to 2019, they did nothing. They ranged from about $150 to $300, and that's pre-split pricing. So you've got to divide that by five. So I suppose that's from $30 to $60. Um, in 2019, early in 2019, they plummeted down. Um, I just showed the chart there. So you can see this is from about 2014. Um, hello there. Up and down. I mean, they, they hit a peak when um, Musk says something stupid about taking the company private, for which he got fined massively. But anyway, um, 
in I think it, I think uh, Q4 of uh, 2018 wasn't so good, and things were going pear shaped at Tesla, and of course there were loads and loads of shorters involved, shorting the price down, and it went all the way from well in new money I suppose about eighty dollars, uh, which would be four hundred and old down to one seven five or I suppose that's thirty five dollars in new money, and it. It turned here. So this is um, June 2019. And since then, apart from the last few months, it's been absolutely incredible. Um, what's it? Um, I didn't want to show that. So yeah, it's, it, um, you can see that there's uh, it peaked here when that was when they split five to one. I think that was the end of uh, August, and then later on, they went into the S and P 500. Now, I find this is the VectorVest chart, and I've got an IG chart, and I think it shows a it shows the price up here. I think they must be after hours. Anyway, um, here's the VectorVest chart, a lovely channel. Um, I mean, it, it went for a long time, 27 weeks between the bottom to the top. And then it um, had that five to one split. And here you see, I got a line at about five, four, five, three, nine, it says over there. And that's um, in the next slide. You see, we have this blow off top. Um, <clears throat> now I've held all the way through this or well, most of my shares, I did have some that I just traded a bit. But um, the thing about Tether is, you know, you, you could have sold there at that peak and then you'd have missed out on that. I'm not sure if I should say this because I've missed out on all that. Anyway, for the ones I've held, but I think you see what I mean. When, when it's going up like this, it, you kept getting these peaks. And if you'd have sold at a peak somewhere, you'd probably regret it a few weeks later. And now it's... Um, well, there's that line I drew of support because in March it came back. This is a weekly chart, by the way. In March it um, came back there, and again in uh, that must be April. So a couple of double bottoms. Well, well, that's March. Sorry, and then it's come back again recently. Um, so it's nearly three, one, two-ish, three times maybe. It's hit that, and. Who knows? It might um, it might rebound from here. If it goes below this line, God help us if you've got Tesla shares, because the next support I think is below 450 or wherever. I mean, it, it looks a bit dire. And um, I was hoping this would be um, a declining wedge, but it's not really, is it? It's um, I don't know what you call it, but um, it could be a spring coming along, couldn't it? I need Steve. Steve Goff to tell me if there's a spring coming along in Tesla. He, he knows intimately about these things. But anyway, it's been a roller coaster ride. I think it's going to go up, not as much as it has in the last year. I mean, that is um, incredible. Uh, I think it will go up again, though, um, in years to come. Probably might be a long ride if you've got to wait for. But I mean, building these two new factories, it, it's. Um, it's it's got to have a huge impact. I mean, they're going to be if they made five hundred thousand last year with the two new factories coming on stream, and a million Cybertruck orders. They're going to really, you know, I mean, overvalued at the moment, but they're going to they're going to belt it. I think. I hope. Anyway, that's more or less everything. Uh, things I haven't covered, so I'll cover them now briefly. But. Um, there's so much misinformation, fake news. A recent example was in a couple of weeks ago, I suppose it must have been the beginning of June, someone put out a report saying, oh, China's sales are down 50%. And then we find out later when the real figures come out that actually they increase. But people are doing this, the shorters presumably, um, just to take the price down. It went down 5% on that news. Um, there are lots of analysis reports. Uh, obviously, they range from high and low, but there's a new 
recent one from a guy called Colin Rush who runs Oppenheimer. Um, Kathy Woods, I have mentioned, she's pretty bullish on Tesla with the robo taxis. Um, and I think that's about it, really. That's all I wanted to cover. I don't know how long I've been, probably too long. But anyway, thank you for viewing. I just hope you enjoyed it. Just about the right amount of time, I think. Um, <laughs> there have been lots and lots of questions. Um, so if you can hang around for a few minutes, I've just. I hope wondered. I know the answers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh, Lord, now I can't get back to them. What am I doing? Um, oh, somebody said... While said, you're talking, I'll just, I'll just what... show this chart. Sorry? Okay, go on. No, I just... Um, do you remember back in 2019, we had those hot stock picking competitions? Oh, yes. And, um, and I thought it got ridiculous because people were buying, like, one, they had to have five, at least five stocks in their portfolio. They're buying one stock of this, one stock of that, four one stock holdings. And then they'd have one share that they thought would do really well. And they put the rest of the money in that. So I thought, obviously, I didn't think of it in time to do it. But um, I just thought, oh, I'll put Tesla in with some few other shares. And I started choosing A, B, C. <laughs> <laughs> I stuck an apple as well. and. Um, I mean, this this is a portfolio. There's no genius on it. It's just been there. So since um, these shares were bought on 1st of October 2019, and since that date, even with the recent downturn from 900-ish to 600, it's still up 1140%. That is um, quite <laughs> phenomenal. <laughs> quite phenomenal. Just nice that. Yeah. Um, Okay, somebody asked, and I can't get back to it to, to see who it was, but what uh, car do you actually own? I'm not prepared to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, um, I, I'm really, well, I was pretty annoyed, really. I rushed out and bought a car because my old car <clears throat> failed its MOT. Oh. It was quite an old car. And I was planning to get, and when, I, when it did this, you couldn't get the model, you could get the Model S or the Model X, but they cost a fortune. I couldn't get a Model 3, and I rushed out and <coughs> bought a, a Nissan Leaf, which is a great car, but it's not a Tesla, put it that way. There's, you know, it does a lot. It's got 160-mile range, which, I mean, most people only do 35 miles a day at maximum. So, you know, yeah, you shouldn't get too head up about ranges, I don't think. But, you know, it's a great car, and uh, I'd recommend it, and I hope to be selling it next year if it... <laughs> anyone wants to contact me <laughs> because i decided that uh, i don't want a model three i want a model y because it's that much higher i've had both hips replaced i'm getting old and oh. um and i want full self-driving so that i don't have to drive the car uh, and i can rent it out to other people and make money out of it as well oh which yeah is what, good idea which is something that tesla are planning to do anyway but they reckon that eventually they won't be selling the cars to end users to you know people want to drive and they'll be selling they'll be using them all themselves for their robo taxi fleet oh uh, yeah and um i mean certainly in in cities these kind of cars that you see parked <laughs> around and you hire it for two or three hours um that um that's often the way these things go isn't it and especially if you can sort of plug it in <clears throat> while it's waiting in between hires yeah, yeah. um Oh, there were several other questions, but I'm struggling with this blooming questions thing. It seems to have disappeared on me, and I can't get it back now. It's gone into a tiny little thing. Oh, somebody asked, um, could you get these superchargers at home? Uh, well, probably if you had enough money, but why would you need them? Um, well, yeah. Overnight charging is fine, you know, if you... I mean, I'll put in the plug. I'm with Octopus Energy. Yeah. And if you want to change to Octopus Energy, there's £50 each for both of us. Let me know. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I think they're great because they, they do a thing called Go Faster. And um, they used to offer a thing just called Octopus Go, and you could charge for four hours at one price, so at 5p a, a kilowatt hour. And then they reduced it to 1p per kilowatt hour. 
Oh. But they reduced the time you could do it and changed the time. So now from 8.30, I used to charge at midnight, uh, but now it's 8.30 to 11.30, and I, I charge at 1p per kilowatt hour. And my car takes, well, it probably, you get more than a mile out of a kilowatt hour. It's about up to four, depending on the weather and everything. So I'm paying less than a penny per mile. Wow. Well, that's brilliant. Yeah. So, that's you know, they may cost you more to start with, but there'll be less maintenance. And, you know, if you're going to use it a lot, one PM mile, that's Octopus. Go. Octopus are a good energy company. Yeah. I like them. Yeah. yeah. Okay, my thought when you started this, um, and I'm sorry to all those people who wrote questions, but um, I'm just struggling to to find them all. There were so many, and and the window that they're in is tiny. I can't make it bigger. <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to have to get some practice in on, on this. Um, but my thought was um, I know that, um, or rather I believe, that governments um, – strangled the development of certain engines in the early days of um well or whenever because they were getting such um a good um tax on petrol uh, now it's kind of flipped and and you know they're they're having to go to electric or promote electric for all sorts of, all the reasons that you were talking yeah. about um I just wonder whether what's going on behind the scenes to influence the development and the the um, marketing of all of this because of various um, lobbies of various you know beliefs and um, people that are making good money now on the the kind of um, vehicles that we have and and they can see it all disappearing. So the oil manufacturers must be you know really concerned about mm. you know I, I stopped investing in oil companies over a year ago <laughs> yeah yeah um, doesn't seem right you know to uh, and Shell are being fined aren't they I think David mentioned it the other day that, right. um, yeah I don't know because they're not um, tightening up emission controls yeah yeah it, there's a, a massive I mean, and it was, in the whole area it was Prime Minister at the time, or Chancellor, what was it, Gordon Brown? Oh, yeah. He did that silly thing, didn't he, of um, pushing diesels. Oh. <laughs> Which, I mean, they're, they're terrible things, aren't they, really? They're so... Well, they, they were, originally they were, because um, I remember um, we had one, I can't remember, uh, in the 80s. It's the late 70s, early 80s, um, and they were supposed to be really efficient. Um, yeah, yeah. Oh, they, they were, yeah, they were certainly being pushed by um, by Gordon Brown, I believe, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, Steve, thank you very much for that. Um, lots and lots of people um, I noticed in the questions when I found them um, were really interested, and lots of people have asked um, for the presentation. So please do send it to me. And for, all, for those of you still here and listening, um, um, we are about to finish, I promise. 92 people. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, if you email either David or myself, um, then you will be, you'll get, we'll send you the presentation. Um, so if you've got my email, fine. If not, then you'll have David's um, um, and you'll be able to, um, he will send the emails to me and I'll send out all the presentations. Um, tell me which ones you want. If you want the um, model portfolios, if you want Alan's um, fascinating research <laughs> on the number of shares. And certainly I think there's going to be lots of people wanting this one, especially with all those links to all the other information. That's really great, Steve. Thank you. That's a pleasure. I think I've turned off my screen, have I? But I can still see it here. <laughs> you have, yeah, yeah, it's back to my screen. Um, well, all I've got left to say now is thank you all for attending. Thank you to all our um, great presenters. Um, I think it was um, a, a really great meeting tonight. And our next meeting is on the 21st of July. Um, 21st of July. So mark it in your diaries. Uh, we'll, be, we'll be sending you um, information about who we've got speaking. Um, 
I'm just actually checking. No, I'm not away that week, so I will be here. Okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> so uh, thanks very much indeed, everybody. And um, I, I just, Sue, before I go, I just on our WhatsApp group, someone just said, "Was I a teenager in 1898?" Oh. <laughs> 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 I loved, I loved that Porsche electric vehicle. I want one. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, okay. Well, thanks very much, everybody. Um, and good night and see you next time.